In this video, we are going to study reduction formulae. Now, in the word reduction is the word reduce. So, reduction formulae are used to reduce the trigonometric ratio of any angle to the trigonometric ratio of an acute angle. Okay, it is very important that you understand why we have reduction formulae. And this is what they are about. So, for example, I'm just going to give you an example straight off. Okay, so sine of 125 degrees. This is an example of a trig ratio of any angle. My angle being 125. Now, 125 is not an acute angle. So, we want to be able to reduce this to a trig ratio, so sine, of an acute angle. Okay, and our reduction formula will be able to help us to do this. But this reduces to sine of 55 degrees. These are equal. Okay, another example would be sine of 150 degrees. Not an acute angle. We want to write it as a trig ratio of an acute angle. And our reduction formula will teach us how to do that. So, to build our understanding of why a trig ratio of one angle can equal that same trig ratio of another angle, let's look at the graph of a trig function. So what we have here is the graph of y equals sine x. Okay. Now, on this graph, if we look at where x is 30 degrees and where x is... 150 degrees, we notice that they have the same y value of a half. So that means we have y equals sine of 150 degrees that's equal to the same y value of sine of 30 degrees, and that y value was a half. Okay, but not only that, those are not the only points that have the same y value. We also have at 390 degrees. And at 510 degrees, that they have the same y coordinate. So we have, we can write y equals sine of 510 degrees. That is equal to sine of 390 degrees, which is equal to sine of 150 degrees and sine of 30 degrees. And they were all equal to a half. Okay, but not only that. What if we look at sine of 210 degrees its y value is negative a half okay so y equals sine of 210 degrees is equal to negative a half now how does that relate to this it's negative a half so if i just put a negative in front of the half there means I can also put a negative in front of the sine 30. So sine of 210 degrees, the trig sine of any angle is equal to negative sine of an acute angle. Okay, so this is just understanding the period periodicity of a function. But what we have here is equations. Okay. And what happens is that in each of these equations, we have the sine of any angle, and they are all reduced to the sine of an acute angle. Now, we want to understand how these reductions work, okay? So that we don't have to use the graph. We want formulae. Now, these are the reduction formulae. This is a summary, and we are going to break these down, looking at them quadrant by quadrant to really understand what is going on here. So just have a brief look at this, okay? And I just want to say what we are going to do is we are going to consider theta as an acute angle, okay? And if we look in the first quadrant, from 0 degrees to 90 degrees, all our angles will be acute angles, if we look at the second quadrant, here the angles lie between 90 and 180 degrees. So what we can do in the second quadrant is name our angles in terms of 180 degrees minus an acute angle. 
if I'm just subtracting an acute angle from 180 degrees, I still land in the second quadrant. Okay, in the third quadrant what we do is we label all our angles as 180 degrees plus an acute angle. And since it's just acute, it won't take us past the 270 degrees. And in the, th in the fourth quadrant, we label all our angles, or we, could re we can rewrite all our angles in terms of 360 degrees minus an acute angle. Remember, negative angles, so minus theta, are measured in a clockwise direction. But if I'm subtracting just an acute angle, I still remain in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so that's an important concept. We're going to be looking at that and then understanding how the reductions work. So if we focus on quadrant one. If I have any angle in quadrant one, it'll be an acute angle. So if I measure in a anti-clockwise direction, let's call this theta because we are now considering theta as an acute angle. It does not have to be theta, it can be alpha, whatever, okay? But for any angle in the first quadrant, I will have a set of coordinates, okay? A radial arm that ends with a set of coordinates and in the first quadrant, those coordinates will be a positive x value and a positive y value. So if I want to find the sine, cos and tan of any acute angle, I will always have a positive y over a positive r. Cos theta will always be a positive x over a positive r. Tan theta will always be a positive y over a positive x. And we have positive, positive, positive. All are positive values. And we know that from the class diagram. Okay. Now when it comes to the second quadrant, if I measure, so let's just write in the angles here. So in the second quadrant, our angles must be between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. So if I measure an angle in an anti-clockwise direction, and a, I form a radial arm, so I have this angle, okay? My angle here in the second quadrant is considered as 180 degrees minus an acute angle. So this angle here, we can rewrite as 180 degrees minus an acute angle. Okay, so just so that you can understand this, let's just use some numbers. So imagine theta was 60, okay? And if this angle here was 60 degrees, what would this full angle here be? Now, knowing that angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees, this angle would be 120 degrees. But how do, how do we work out the 120? It's 180 degrees minus 60. Okay, so in the second quadrant, any coordinate has a negative x coordinate and a positive y coordinate. So if I now want to find the trig ratios of any angle in the second quadrant, I would have sine of 180 degrees minus minus theta, sine cos of 180 degrees minus theta, and tan of 180 degrees minus theta. This is just showing you that any angle in the second quadrant can be rewritten in terms of 180 degrees minus an acute angle, okay? And if we find the values here, because our angle is in the second quadrant, it would be a positive y over a positive r, cos would be a negative x over a positive r, tan would be a positive y over a negative x, okay? Now, if we compare these values to the values that we found in the first quadrant, okay, let me quickly just 
snatch these. Oops, sorry. Okay, so let's compare them. So sine theta and sine 180 degrees minus theta equal the same thing. So we can say, okay, this is equal to sine theta. They are exactly the same. If we compare cos of 180 degrees minus theta to what cos of theta is equal to, here it's negative x over r, here it's x over r. So it's just the negative form. So this is equal to the negative of cos theta. If I have tan of 180 degrees minus theta and I compare its value to the value of tan theta in the first quadrant, here I have y over x and here I have y over negative x. So again, it's just the negative of the tan of the angle in the first quadrant. Okay, now going from the sine 180 degrees minus theta to the sine theta, this is a reduction formula. Okay, the cos of 180 degrees minus theta going to negative cos of the acute angle is a reduction formula. And the same for the tan. Okay, let's just look at a numerical example. So if I have sine of 120 degrees, 120 is an angle in the second quadrant. So I can rewrite that angle as 180 degrees minus an acute angle that will give me 120. Now 180 minus 60 is 120. So this tells me, this reduction formula here tells me that if I rewrite it in this form, it will reduce to positive sine of the acute angle, which is 60 degrees. Okay, let's just also do this for cos so that you understand when it goes to a negative value. Okay, so if I have, um, let me just change the color. If I have cos of 120 degrees, again, cos is, let's pick a different angle. If I have cos of 150 degrees, 150 is an angle in the second quadrant where I can, sorry, let me do this. Okay, so 150 degrees is an angle in the second quadrant. Now I can rewrite this angle as 180 degrees minus what would give me 150. It's 30 degrees. Okay, so I use this formula to rewrite my angle in terms of 180 minus acute angle. Then the reduction formula tells me this reduces to negative cos of the acute angle, which is 30. Okay, let's move on to the third quadrant. So in quadrant 3, our angles lie between 180 degrees and 270 degrees. So if I measure an angle in an anti-clockwise direction into the third quadrant, okay, then I can name any of my angles in terms of 180 degrees, which gives me the full straight line, rotation about the straight line, plus an acute angle. Okay, so 180 it forms a straight line and then plus an acute angle lands me within the third quadrant. Okay, in the third quadrant, my radial arm will have coordinates that are are negative x and negative y. Okay, so if I now find, so what I've just pasted here is the formulae from the first quadrant. So let's so that we can compare them. Okay, so if I find if I find the formulae for the trig ratios in the third quadrant sine of, now an angle in the third quadrant is written, can be rewritten as 180 degrees plus an acute angle. So I have cos 
and 10. Okay, so in terms of negative x, negative y, and a positive r, sine in the third quadrant goes to a negative y over a positive r, cos in the third quadrant goes to negative x over a positive r, and tan in the third quadrant is negative y over negative x. The negatives cancel and we are left with a positive y and a positive over a positive x. So if we now compare these to the first quadrant, sine of 180 degrees plus theta equals negative y over r. That is the negative of the sine theta from the first quadrant. If I compare the cos expressions, here I have the negative of the cos theta from the first quadrant. If I compare the tan expressions, they are the same. Okay, so now my reduction formula for the third quadrant are that sine of any angle in the third quadrant reduces to negative sine of the acute angle. And cos of an angle in the third quadrant reduces to negative cos of the acute angle. Tan of an angle in the third quadrant reduces to positive tan of the acute angle. Let's just look at a numerical example. So if I have the angle um, 240 degrees, okay? So I have sine of 240 degrees. Now 240 is between 180 and 270, so it's within the third quadrant. In the third quadrant, I can rewrite any angle as 180 degrees plus an acute angle. But now what acute angle would give me 240? It's 180 plus 60 degrees. So I just want to emphasize the fact that the value of the angles must be the same before we do the reduction. Okay, so this then I know from the reduction formula that this reduces to negative sine of the acute angle, 60 degrees. So let's look at tan, 240 degrees. Okay, so I can rewrite my angle, 240, in terms of 180 degrees plus an acute angle that would get me to 240. And the formula tells me that tan of that angle reduces to positive tan of the acute angle. Okay, looking at the fourth quadrant, now angles in the fourth quadrant lie between 270 degrees and 360 degrees. Okay, so in terms of an acute angle, if I measure anti-clockwise an angle into the fourth quadrant. In terms of an acute angle, the acute angle is here. Okay, so notice that the acute angle is always measured relative to the x-axis. The acute angle does not sit here. It's measured relative to the x-axis. Okay, when we measure relative to the y-axis, our reduction formula will be something else. Okay, so in this way, an angle in the fourth quadrant is rewritten as 360 degrees minus the acute angle, okay? And its coordinates will be a positive x and a negative y. So, bringing in our formulae from the first quadrant for comparison, in the fourth quadrant, sorry, in the first quadrant for comparison, in the fourth quadrant, my formula would be sine of an angle, which I can write as 360 degrees minus the acute angle. That equals, okay, so looking at the coordinates in the fourth quadrant, it's negative y over positive r. Cos of the angle in the fourth quadrant is equal to a positive x over r 
and tan of the angle in the fourth quadrant is equal to a negative y over a positive x. So if we compare to the values in the first quadrant, then the sine is the negative form. So it's negative sine theta. If we compare the cos expressions, they are equal. If we compare the tan expressions, this is the negative of the tan. So now I have my reduction formula for the fourth quadrant. Okay, looking at a numerical example. So if my angle here that takes me all the way around into the fourth quadrant is 300 degrees, I can rewrite, so say I'm looking for 300, sine of 300. I can rewrite that angle in terms of 360 degrees minus an acute angle that would take me to 300. So I'm subtracting 60. Then my formula tells me, okay, this reduces to negative sine of the acute angle, which is 60. If I look at cos of the angle, let's choose a different angle. Um, say I have cos of um, 280. Okay, in the fourth quadrant, I rewrite my angle as 360 degrees minus an acute angle that would give me the value of 280, and that is 80 degrees. Okay, so now the formula tells me this reduces to positive cos of the acute angle. Now, if I were to look at the graphs of these trig ratios, I would find for the cos graph that at cos of 280 degrees and cos of 80 degrees, they would have the same y value. So coming back to the slide, we have a summary of all the reduction formulae in each quadrant. And you will now be more familiar with the use of these expressions for the angles in each quadrant. Okay, now what I want to focus on here is there is an easy way to remember these reduction formulae. If you can remember how to rewrite each angle in the quadrant, then you only need cost to help you remember which reduction reduces to a positive value. Okay, so what I mean by that is if we look in the second quadrant, and we compare the expressions, it is only sine that reduces to a positive value. So sine of 180 degrees minus theta equals positive sine theta. If you look, the other expressions reduce to a negative trig ratio of, um, sorry, negative trig function of the acute angle. If we look in the third quadrant, it is only tan that reduces to a positive trig ratio. If we look in the fourth quadrant, it's only cos that reduces to a positive trig ratio. So this is in line with CAST, the cost diagram. The other thing I want to really point out to you is that these reduction formulae revolve around angles related to the x-axis angles, okay? So it's 180 degrees minus an acute angle, 180 degrees plus an acute angle, 360 degrees minus an acute angle, okay? It's important because we do also have reduction formulae that relate to the angles on the y-axis. And for those, reduct those reduction formulae work differently. So you must distinguish. So now we're going to do some quick examples of applying these reduction formulae. So we are told to simplify and then we're given three expressions to simplify. So if we start with number one, we have cos of 150 degrees. Now, 
the way we can simplify this is to reduce it to cos of an acute angle. So, determine in which quadrant your angle lies. 150 is in the second quadrant. So, in the second quadrant, we can rewrite our angles as 180 degrees minus an acute angle. Now, what acute angle would take me back to 150 degrees? It's 30 degrees. 180 minus 30 is 150. Okay, now I'm in the second quadrant. So the cost diagram tells me that only sine is positive in the second quadrant, but this is cos. So this will reduce to a negative cos of the acute angle, and that is your simplified form. Now, 30 degrees is also a special angle, so you could actually find the value for this. Right, but let's look at the second expression. We have sine of 180 degrees plus theta. To simplify, we reduce this to sine of an acute angle. In this um, expression, the acute angle is theta. Okay, so determine which quadrant your angle lies in. 180 plus theta takes us into the third quadrant. Using cost, in the third quadrant, we realize that only tan is positive. So that means the sine it becomes negative sine of the acute angle, simplified. If we look at number 3, we have cos of 317 degrees times tan of 196 degrees. Okay, so what we have to do in this expression is reduce twice. Okay, so take each trig ratio on its own in turn. So if I look at cos of 317 degrees, 317 lies between 270 and 360. So that means I'm in the fourth quadrant here. So I rewrite my angle as 360 degrees minus an acute angle that would give me the value of 317. And that is 43 degrees. Okay, so then I move on to the second trig function. So I have tan of, now 196 is more than 180, less than 270, so I am in the third quadrant. In the third quadrant, we label our angles, we can rewrite our angles as 180 degrees plus an acute angle that would give me the value of 196, and that is 16. So, We've rewritten our angles. Now we have to determine the sign, okay, so plus or minus, to which our trig ratios, trig functions reduce. So cos in the fourth quadrant is positive. So this reduces to positive cos of the acute angle. Moving on to the second one, tan in the third quadrant is positive. So this reduces to positive tan of the acute angle, and you have simplified it.